What's happening everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. My name is Alan. If this is your first time viewing my content, welcome, welcome. Um, I've been kind of welcomed home. I'm back in Toronto, Canada and it's about minus 16 or 17 degrees here. It is not bearable weather unfortunately and so I've decided to stay in and continue making videos for you guys here in my living room. So you might be wondering what is today's topic? Well it's all about editing your travel photos and specifically the ones that are very different from the style that you typically produce. So I recently went on a bunch of travel. I was in Iraq, Egypt and London, United Kingdom and while I was traveling it really got me thinking on how I would approach editing each set of images that I would get from each location. And specifically while I was in Iraq, it got me thinking, how do I properly portray the experiences I had there and properly kind of fit together the story and tell you guys uh, the best experience possible. So I really took my time with the footage, I took my time with the photos, and I've been really working hard to edit them and uh, create the content that I'm very proud of. So today's video is a two-part series. The first is exploring an area that's very close to my home, and the second is, uh, is a road trip that I did with a friend from one side of the country to the other. And in doing this trip, I had so many incredible moments, and I also somewhat disconnected from social media. I had a time when I just completely shut down and I said, you know what, I want to enjoy my time here. I haven't been back in about 10 years. Oh yeah, I'm also Iraqi if you didn't know. So to me, that's my, my second home. Uh, well, technically my first home, but you get it. It was nice to be there and it was nice to reconnect with my family and whatnot. So at the end of the video today, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to show you guys how I would edit those photos. Um, that I took in Iraq and then talk to you guys about how I would make sure that there's some sort of consistency and, uh, and flow to the images so that they work well and that they also showcase the country in the best way possible. So without further ado, here are some of the footages. 6 a.m. never felt so much better. These guys are gonna hate me. What's up bro? Hey man. You ready? You're not ready, you said. No. Of course not, because it's 6 a.m. <laughs> and you're never excited for more early mornings like this. No, man, I'm not a morning person. Hey, Are you a morning on. person? Like, uh, yeah. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so as expected, k did not wake up. Lo and behold. And it rained a lot this morning, so we're not getting a sunrise. But we made it here. We're going to try to explore the area a little bit. Super excited to be back here. I was here a couple days ago. So you guys are probably wondering where are we today? We're currently in downtown Erbil and right behind me is the citadel of Erbil, also known as Qalat Erbil. Now this thing dates back to the fifth millennium and I actually did a research project about it in university when I was in urban planning school. And the last remains or I think one of the remains they found was about 2300 BC, which is mind blowing. Another interesting fact about it is that it actually was built by the Assyrian Empire and uh, for some of you that may know, I'm Assyrian in some manner. Now this is going to be a lot of fun for me because I've always wanted to come and explore this a little bit more and I got these guys with me who are going to you know, help me capture some of it uh, and then after that we're going to stop and grab some breakfast and some tea. Let's go see what we can find. had a little bit of a delay. The security guard wouldn't let us up here because supposedly this place doesn't open up until 9 o'clock to the public. I don't see what the big problem is, but we'll just go and follow their We're rules. We're the first people to get in. So. We're the first people to get up here. That is true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully there's a, a lot for us to see up here. Super excited. The view is going to be phenomenal. I can definitely guarantee that. Gemstone Museum. Lots and lots of gemstones. This is super cool. 
So these are like it, the stones in, uh, from Kurdistan and outside Kurdistan. Um, and there's information written on it in, I think. It's yeah. all sorts of different stones from Kurdistan region. I imagine some from different parts of Iraq as well. You got some sharks. I didn't know Iraq had sea sharks. Gem. More stairs. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, I like the way they designed this. This is cool. Hopefully there's a nice view up top. Can't wait to start editing some of these photos I've been taking today. Oh, it's locked. Can you ask me for the key, please? So 4,000 years ago, people were inhabiting this area. And uh, when I was doing my research, actually, in, in planning school, I found out that it was a very sustainable community. They used to grow their agriculture here. They even had a system for the irrigation. So if it rained, they had planned passages for the water to travel. And it was also used as a way to defend themselves from any uh, perpetrators or any other armies or um, other, I guess, anyone who would want to attack uh, by having it excavated, sorry, by having it elevated, um, they were able to protect themselves and oversee the entire land. And they had farmers that were at the bottom of the fields, you know, cultivating and uh, dealing with all the livestock. That's so 4,000 years ago, <laughs> a lot of things were happening here so that everyone else can enjoy their, their modern day. Last time I was here was back in 2010 and my dad brought up his car and drove it into here which is really cool considering the fact that now I'm having trouble with security trying to maneuver around but uh, it's been really really nice um, being here seeing this just to know that like this had a major significance through my history you know uh, my people's history here in Iraq it's beautiful to know that it's being preserved, it's being taken care of. I think that's been a major issue here in the Middle East is that because of the wars, a lot of artifacts and historical elements and you know artwork is being destroyed and displaced. And it's nice to know that this is being preserved and people are here to take care of it. And that we get to appreciate it and I get to share it with you guys. I'm just walking towards Another entrance point. Uh, this is kind of looking towards the city, I want to say east, if not west. Uh, hopefully it's a nice view. I imagine it will be. Oh, the fog looks really great. Beautiful. Yeah, and like I said, this view is going to be beautiful. You should be standing up here, man. You'll fit perfectly in with our group height. <laughs> How's it taste? It looks wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to eat the entire one of these. Just bite it up. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes really good, I won't lie. Oh, okay. Mm. Good, I'm happy for you. As long as you like it. But I don't think I'm going to eat this entire thing. <laughs> Look at the size of this. Oh my god. Oh, how's that go? Minty taste. Minty hazelnut, some creamy, all the things you I love. You cannot really explain. Yeah, you know you can. Yeah. All right, guys. I think we got to call it a day. It's starting to rain a lot. My camera's getting wet again. I can't afford to get this camera <laughs> soaked again. I mean, this is this would be the third time. It's been unreal, guys. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. so much Thank for you. today. It's been. It was a pleasure having you here. Hey man, honestly, it was a pleasure to meet all you guys. Tomorrow I am going to Sleimania, so I'm super excited to show you guys a little bit of that. In the meantime, we are headed home. Hope you enjoyed this video today, or the segment of the video. This is part one of part two. Um, yeah, see you guys soon. The road is unpredictable. It can guide you and at times easily mislead you. Driving, you sometimes find yourself distracted, taking every chance to look out the window. 
watching the mountain tops as buildings and trees begin to blind your sight. The road is eye-opening. As you follow the road with every twist and every turn, you begin to forget the destination and focus on the journey. The road is comfort. At every stop, you experience something new. The calmness that cascades down the mountains and onto the streets. The scent of fresh air and tea open up your senses. The road is alive. One moment you lose all thought and you begin to imagine no outcome. Lost as you make your way, not knowing what you'll find and where you'll end up. The road is endless. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video footage. Uh, it, every time I watch stuff like this over again, it reminds me of how incredible my experiences have been traveling in different places around the world. And in Iraq, it really gave me this unique perspective on diversity, you know, being in the market where it's very busy, to being in someone's home, uh, to being in, you know, the beautiful landscape. And that diversity is what I really want to capture and share with you guys, because it is a very diverse country. It is very rich in culture. Culture. It is very rich in history um, and so as I go into developing uh, my style of photography there I thought about what I want to really highlight and I really want to focus on the diversity of details that there were there specifically in terms of the lifestyle of the daily life of a person traveling or you know going to work or really being a part of the world that exists there um, so in editing the photos we're gonna pop open my laptop and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about, but I wanna to try to unify all the content that I created. And doing so, you create a unique style that is applicable to that specific country or the city that you've captured. So let's jump onto my laptop and start editing. So the first thing I usually do before I start editing is I start to think about the context and the location. So in Iraq, there was a lot of warm tones. Uh, at moments, there were times where the weather got really moody. So I want to focus on highlighting key color palettes that exist in the environment there, but also try to pull in and introduce new colors. So that's usually done through tone curves. Um, that's also done through, you know, emphasizing certain colors and desaturating others. And you'll see as I'm editing that exact process I would take in order to make sure that the images match even when it's different, say, uh, type of styles. If it's a portrait versus landscape, there's ways that you can still draw in that consistency. So I've selected my images and as you could tell, they're very diverse. I have some landscape photos at the very bottom, some portraits. Uh, some market life. So I'm going to jump in into my first image uh, from the market and we're going to start editing it. Now off the bat I can start to see uh, specific details I want to highlight. Um, first of all I don't want to take away from the color of the brick um, that is very unique to the culture of Iraqi uh, architecture. So uh, traditionally I want to always try to keep a consistent um, feel and look to what exists there. I don't want to take away from that but at the same time, I do want to emphasize other things. I want that to pop the most. I want the shadows to be very, very dark. I want to be heavy contrast. Uh, so let's just begin by playing around with the contrast first. Reduce the highlights a little bit. I like to pump up the shadows because I'm going to pump up the blacks as well. Sorry, I'm going to reduce the blacks. And then play around with the whites. I'm fine right now with uh, the white balance, but later on, once I start to um, edit further, if I need to come back to it, I will. Clarity, I usually bring down. I don't like when there's too much clarity in my image. The haze, we don't need vibrancy. We're not going to touch, saturation. Now the tone curve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one point, and then I'm going to pull up the tone curve just to give the shadows a little bit of a darker feel. Um, and then here, this is where I really experiment with the image. I try to play around with it. If you need to create more points, you can do that. Um, but don't be afraid to play around with the tone curve. The tone curve is an easy way to just kind of manipulate um, different elements in your photo without having to go through the dials. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit more and that should be fine for now. Now, in terms of the actual colors themselves, I'm going to emphasize and uh, de-emphasize certain elements. So, 
Usually the magentas, I don't really play around with too much. I'll reduce the magentas and the purples. Uh, if I see them in the image, I don't really try to work with them too much. The blues, I'm going to desaturate as well. This is a, a style of editing I always typically try to include in my images. I mean, it works for some people, it doesn't work for others. For me, I enjoy getting rid of the blues as much as possible, unless it's a beautiful blue sky. Greens, we're going to desaturate as well, but we're going to bring it over to the hue of a yellow. Uh, now, this is where you have to be very careful, right? I don't want to change the color of the image too much, but I want to bring in a little bit more warmth to certain elements. Now, see if I desaturate the yellow, the brick starts to change color too, so I have to be very careful here. I don't want to do that too much. Reds, I'm going to desaturate, but I'm going to bring it over to an orange. Now, split toning. When, you, when it comes to split toning, you really want to look at your photo and already identify the color of the highlights and identify the color of the shadows and then start to remotely change them based on the context of the photo. Now since this is a city shot I'm not going to give it color because the brick itself is already a nice warm color so I'm going to try to go to a cool tone um, in the highlights and that typically is somewhere in the middle with the blues and the greens. Once you find the spot that you like just leave it and then with the shadows similar, you give it some saturation and then you can begin to edit the shadows. So now for this photo specifically, I'm going to try and stay away from the, the pinks and the purples. I'm going to try, try to stay very close to the greens um, and the blues as much as possible. So I think right about here, I'm content. So, so far, the image is somewhat changing. Now, don't be too fearful. Slowly, we'll start to edit it further and make sure that it still has some sort of consistency. Uh, now, this is very important when it comes to editing. It's not a linear process. I don't just start editing a photo as the dials go and then that's it. No, I go back and forth quite a lot until I'm very content with what I have left. In terms of sharpness, um, for social media purposes, for like Instagram stuff, I actually redo sharpening. I'm not sure why, but my images always still end up looking extremely sharp. So, um, but for the sake of this, I'm going to leave sharpness on. We don't really need noise reduction. Um, and in terms of lens correction, we don't need to enable any of those. Now transformation, obviously we want to make sure that it's straight. There's other options, there's the auto, the guided, the full and the vertical, but for now level is fine. Um, and then if you want to put some grain onto your images, you can definitely do that. If I do, it's usually between 20 to 25. I don't like to go too much. And the size depends on the type of photo. If it's a portrait, I like to go a little bit more so that you can start to see the skin melt. Um, but for as a city shot, I'm going to go probably at 36 and roughness, keep it around 43. So it has a little bit of grain, not too much, but I, that's, that's enough for me to feel content with the photo. Now I go back to the top again and I see how I can manipulate the image further. So if I make it warmer, um, you start to see the brick change color very drastically. But I don't want it to be too warm, I want it to be just enough to draw in attention. So my emphasis is based on the brick. I want everyone's eyes to go to the details of the architecture, those minute. I want people to see the pigeons that are nesting in the top. Of course, there's focus here in the shadows at the very bottom of the image, but uh, this general area is where I want to pull attention. And you can also introduce masks, um, and that's a good way to uh, control attention as well by darkening certain elements. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure right there a little bit on top so it creates more emphasis in the middle and then just go around and play with the dials until you feel content with what you have it's kind of as simple as that uh, I don't try to overthink the editing process too much I mean everyone has their unique editing techniques the ones that I incorporate in my photos generally are, are simplified because I know I have to keep a consistent style across my photos and in order to do so I already have a pretty laid out example of how I would do it I just have to keep replicating the same style but for these images I want to do something very different hence why there's a lot of greens right now popping 
I think I'm content with the photo at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that edit. Um, now you want to make sure that not everything is being copied. So transform because so it might not apply to some photos. Um, crop ratio, you're not really applying to your image. Clarity, I don't even really have clarity in my photos. Uh, and so I'm going to just leave that. Everything else is fine. Copy and then control A, sync, synchronize. And all my images will be edited with that similar style. Now, I have to go in and specifically treat each photo differently. Um, this is just, I've created basically uh, the first layer of edits. Um, now I have to go through and see whether or not this same filter, this preset that I've just created will apply to all the type of other type of photos. So, but is it gonna be applicable for a portrait? Is, it, is the skin gonna be too saturated? Is it gonna be able to work for landscapes? Is it gonna make greens too lush? So this is the second step that I would really take in editing. It's just trying to make sure that the consistency is aligned. Trying to make sure that the consistency is aligned throughout all the images that you have. So going through, I'm starting to see that there's a lot of green and it's a little bit too much for my liking at this moment. So I'm gonna go back through into the split toning and I'm gonna control it in the highlights. And then in the shadows, just a little bit, not too much. And I'm noticing also the skin is extremely saturated, so we don't want that too much. We want a controlled amount. And now reds. Some photos may need cropping, just to bring more attention to a specific detail, or in this case, this is a portrait, so I want to make sure that I'm emphasizing on the person. See, I'm not enjoying the color of the skin here, so I'm going to go back. And I'm going to change that up in the split toning a little bit. And I'm starting to notice that uh, my shadows are kind of too dark. Um, Like I said, every photo deserves its own treatment in some ways, but in order to get the consistency, you have to be able to play around with certain colors. So since these two are shot in the same location, I want to make sure that they have the same look. Now I'm very happy with the way that this is kind of starting to look. Bring out the highlights. Black with blacks. Get a little bit of brightness. Now I want to go in onto his eyes and give him a little bit more pop. So as I'm editing through, I'm starting to realize um, that I have now somewhat created a very consistent look across the photos um, and I'm starting to now just go through and edit minute details so I want to start sharpening certain uh, parts of the image I want to start emphasizing uh, certain features like the eyes um, really pay attention to those details so if it's in a setting like this I want to make sure that the background isn't too faded so that's playing around with the highlights there uh, but at the same time, I want to focus on the architecture and make sure that the architecture um, is consistent as well. So I think I'm very content with where things are right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also export this preset that I just created with you guys um, and upload on my website so you can download it for free. Um, but when you're going through it, just play around with it. See what I did in terms of this, the approach I was taking in terms of editing. So these I'm going to export right now as what they are. And then I'm going to apply some of my own personal presets and show you guys how I would go about um, editing from a preset. I have a lot of different presets and not all of them will work for this. But I'm going to go to my fall 2018 ones, which is the recent presets that I released. Um, and I'm going to try and see how those would work in terms of these photos. 
I'm liking Valley. It's kind of this really nice, warm, vintage look to it. Uh, I think it was Latitude. Latitude, I go in and make sure that the reds in the skin are a little bit more desaturated. See, they start to blend in now. Otherwise, you get that big pop of red and orange mix, and that usually doesn't sit well with me. I don't know why. But if I were to sync, organize this, cross all the photos, let's see how they would look. Oh yeah, this is nice. Do you see the emphasis, the details? Here's some before and after clips. It's a very big difference, actually. Um, you're getting nice, warmer features. Uh, the, the blacks and the shadows are darker. There's nice contrast. Um, some images, it, it sits really well doesn't create too much difference. I didn't want to make the landscape look too different than it is. That's another thing is you want to make sure that there's consistency, but also you don't want to take away from the actual look of your image. Now that the photos have been exported, let's take a look at them here. Very nice. See, I'm, I'm very happy with the way they look. Um, and if I want to go further and add more detail to them, I'd probably throw in more grain, uh, give them a very nice old look to them, uh, considering the age um, of the locations I was visiting and also Iraq as a country. Um, and then the last thing I usually do when I'm editing anything is that I will go through, um, as an example, let's take the one here. Let's take this photo here with my friend Diyar and we're going to pop it open into Photoshop and then I make small changes in the, in the photo itself. I know that these pillars here on the sides, they need to leave. They shouldn't be there. I mean, they're, they're kind of taken away from the location itself. Um, and that's usually very easy to do. You can use a clone tool, just, just like this, just clone away. Now, the, the further out, the smaller the detail as well. You don't worry about being too perfect in terms of how you're cloning or how you're editing it. Because when you pull out, like you're gonna start to notice it's not even evident. It's, it, you're zooming in so close to the image. I always get told, it's like, why don't you just, you know, use the fill tool or, you know, there's an easier way. And I'm like, you know what? I enjoy doing it this way because I just, I feel like I'm getting closer to the pixels. I feel like I'm getting a better understanding of the photo itself and I can make the changes itself and really organize it so that the lines match up, especially here with the bricks. Um, but yeah, so once, once that's done, I'm gonna try to re remove this guy here inside. See, this guy's a little bit more difficult because he's touching the wall, um, but not impossible. That is definitely not impossible. Boom, gone. Never was there. The photo looks much, much better. I actually don't understand why they have those two pillars there. Uh, they have no importance there. So yeah, once I finish that, I'll go through every photo, like I said, and I'll make minor uh, detailed edits and all of them on Photoshop, and then that's it. Um, so that is ultimately how I would approach editing a series of photos from travel. Um, it always begins with asking the first question, how important was this if photo for me? Um, and if it's really important, then I'll start to edit it. And then what kind of photos do I want to start editing? What's the series? What's the story I want to tell? So on my travels here, I want to talk about the diversity in Iraq. So I chose a variety of different photo types, landscapes, you know, photos of people, and photos of architecture, the market. And then after that, I start to think about what I want to emphasize. Which colors am I going to pay very close attention to? Um, what are the key features in my photos that I want to be very consistent throughout in terms of uh, the colors, the, the 
the composition, the, the details that would really identify my photos from others. The last thing is just to sit back and appreciate your photos and to think about them and edit those small details out of them so that you can make sure that they are clean and ready for print, for sharing and whatever else that you would be interested in doing with your photos. So ultimately, that's all for today. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. It was very brief. I'm going to leave, like I said, uh, the preset on my website for you guys to download. Check that out. Um, and as always, remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys all next week. Peace!